I'd like to welcome you to our virtual tour. We're going to visit the, the administration building right in front of the uh, Veterans Memorial. Also the uh, Samson Community Hall. Then we're going to go over to the old Sundance grounds. And we're going to come back over to uh, the Hay Meadows and we'll make our way back to the Samson Museum. So enjoy the tour. We'll do our best to uh, give you some history of the of the nation and some of its um, significant locations. We're here at the uh, administration building and uh, in Cree we call it Asakyogam and that's uh, because when they started putting, when they started uh, living in reservations they had the uh, Indian agent and an Indian agent was responsible for provisions and rations for uh, nation members and that's where they would go get their food and so that's why it's called Asakyogam but uh, traditionally the name it kept the name and for all band offices and administration buildings they're called Asakyogam Go. Here we have the Muscochis Veterans Memorial. These are individuals who have served for not only the nations across Canada, but also for all Canadian people. As you can see, they served in the First and Second World War. Some have served in Korean conflict. Some have served in Iraq. And some during peacetime. These are veterans from Samson, Ermanskin, Louisville, and Montana, and Pigeon Lake. This uh, memorial was erected so we never forget the contributions that these brave individuals did in. Some gave their lives to the conflicts that we've experienced throughout our history. If you go back here, you see that the Muscochis chiefs and councils and veterans acknowledge that Helen Lewis Gladue and Dr. Wilton Littlechild in accessing compensations for Muscochis veterans they worked a lot to get these, to get them recognized for their contributions. We would like to also honor them. This is a beautiful memorial, very proud of it, located right in front of the uh, Peace Hills Trust building, the corner, beautifully landscaped area. Most of you know the uh, uh, Jim Hall Cultural Center and it's being used for primarily for weeks but um, the government paid for this building it used to be the community hall it's called the Samson Hall and where the uh, bingo hall is located right now that's where the hall used to sit and it served uh, a lot of functions there used to be powwows in there there used to be uh, band meetings community meetings community gatherings and it was uh, a multi-purpose building and uh, they did use it for wakes back then. So this building has a long history. But it was moved to this current location and it uh, now sits here. And it was named after uh, uh, Jim Omiso, who was uh, a long serving member as chief and he was also a counselor. It was only appropriate that when he was still alive that they named this building after him and honored him with, uh, with that name. In the late 1800s, the local clergies were complaining to the Department of Interior that they were not converting 
nations to Catholicism and Anglicans. And so the Department of Interior, through their, their powers via Indian Act, banned ceremonies, ceremonies of any sort. We here at Samson were no exception. They banned the ceremony here, 1880s, they banned ceremony here. And then in right around 1928, they were able to put a sun dance here. And this is the, the uh, traditional sun dance grounds of the Samson Cree Nation. They would gather here in June of every year and they would hold sun dances in this area. And of course, with the uh, land being at a premium, the Samson Cree Nation members needing places to put houses and make a life for themselves since the sun dances are no longer here. But this is sacred ground here, and they've kept it intact, and kept it as pasture land, which is great. Said that uh, because of the number of years that we had sun dances here, that uh, the flags that uh, people offered are now, uh, every summer they'll, they'll come out of the ground and they're finding flags here. So this is a uh, sacred ground that we're on here beautiful right along the um, Battle River was protected by trees it's a beautiful place We're now here at the um, Samson Hay Meadows. These are the traditional lands of the Samson Cree Nation. These lands are largely untouched from the time that they, that they um, picked the reserve here. These lands have been uh, the same. The reason why um, I say largely untouched is because there had there has been some uh, uh, agriculture but not uh, to the extent of them farming or cultivating what they did was they used to um, have plots heads of families would have plots where they would uh, cut hay these are uh, natural coarse hay that uh, grows in, in meadows and here we have a large meadow here and there would be uh, a lot of activity here in the summertime because back in the day they had uh, livestock and they needed they needed to get ready for winter so they would come here and people had different plots and they would go and cut their hay and they would help each other out they would, uh, everybody would be here and they would be, um, they would camp here. There'd be a lot of um, um, campfires, tents, teepees, and implements and horses. They would use them to, to cut the hay and they would, uh, <clears throat> they would not bale it, they would uh, stook it. They'd have these haystacks that they used to, uh, that they used to uh, build and then um, they would help each other they would take uh, the hay home or they would um, they would uh, leave it here and during the winter time they would come and get their hay and there would be um, if you can imagine there'd be a lot of there'd be a lot of uh, campfires people cooking outside horses children playing it was, uh, it was good times here. And then when they were done, <clears throat> they would uh, leave it the way it was and would come back year after year. So this is the Samson Cremation Hay Meadow. It was over by Samson Lake.
Welcome to the Samson Cree Nation Museum and Archives. We're in the museum portion of our, our building here. As you can see, there are artifacts and um, uh, storyboards here. But more importantly, we have the chief's wall here. And we're going to start off over here with Maskipton. Maskipton was chief from 1830 to 1869. And he was um, part of the uh, negotiations to have a treaty with uh, a peace treaty with the uh, Blackfoot in Watasquin, which was with the Skewne. In 1868, they, they negotiated a treaty with the Blackfoot through um, with Sweetgrass through the Department of Interior in 1868 at Fort Edmonton, Edmonton House. Next we have Bobtail, Kiskayo. The reason why we have Bobtail here is because he signed the adhesion to Treaty 6 at Blackfoot Crossing in 1877. Now he was not chief of, uh, of Samson at the time. <clears throat> He was the chief of his own reserve, which is now Montana Reserve. But he signed the adhesion, which makes a, uh, which uh, it's just where we got our um, treaty rights from. And he served from 1877 to 1879. He may have served longer, but. Uh, and we apologize for the, the mistake in that one, if we, so. <clears throat> but our band, after Maskipton um, was uh, murdered, our uh, band had was without a chief. And then in 1879, they uh, chose Kanahtagaso as chief, and this is where we got our name from, Samson. But he served from 1879 to 1899. He was a hereditary chief and the, um, the elders and the um, people who, had, uh, who were prominent within the nation were the ones who usually selected the chief. Then after he passed on, his son, uh, Joe Sampson, now served from 1899 to 1942. When Joe Sampson passed away, the elders selected James Crane, which a chalk, uh, from to be their next hereditary chief from 1942 to 1950. And then <clears throat> he asked the nation if they would like to adopt the uh, Indian Act system. They agreed when the first chief we chosen was Baptiste Salba, Kamioinum, and he served one term, 1951 to 1953. And the next election, John Sampson, who was nephew to Joe Sampson, served 1953 to 1957, 1959 to 1961. And then, Felix Buffalo, Kagake Kwanapo, 1957 to 1959, 1961 to 1963. And then Harry Rain, Kim Wan Pot, served one term, 1963 to 1965. Then in 1965, Jacob Lewis, Paskiawin, is um, uh, he served from 1965 to 1969, and then Norman Yellowbird <clears throat> served from 1969 to 1973. And after him, Art Potts from 1973 to 1975. In 1975 to 1979, Frank Buffalo Sr. Then in 1979 to 1981, 
Then again from 1983 to 1989, Jim Omiso, Okisiko. To 1981 to 1983, and again from 1989 to 1993, and from 2002 to 2008, Neokamk Victor Buffalo served as chief. Then we got to say, no, uh, Terry Buffalo Sr. served from 1993 to 1996. And then Florence Buffalo, Mikwas Square, Notebook, served from 1996 to 1999. Then Lena Cutknife from 1999 to 2002. And then Marvin Yellowbird, Mr. served from 2008 to 2011, from 2011 to 2014. Who we don't have on the wall, and we apologize for that, is Kurt Buffalo. Kurt Buffalo, we're going to get his picture and his bio uh, as soon as we can, and he will go up into the, in the next to Marvin here. So we're going to move over to this board right here. This was um, donated to us from the Ipsikopak um, uh, Secondary High School. And this is a um, a map of Alberta, and it has the treaty. The treaty is divided up into treaty areas, but more importantly, it's a map of uh, Cree place names. And this was done by Bruce Cutknife. He he was responsible for putting the uh, Cree place names and the treaty markings. <coughs> As you can see here, we have uh, the four reserves here. So <coughs> you have all the um, uh, the rivers and um, uh, land locations, the uh, heritage sites, places of significance for our people. So we have uh, the lakes and the, and the rivers mostly were landmarks and then um, certain land formations were also uh, landmarks and so we had names for them. This is our storyboard and, um, and how we got the name Hobima prior to uh, 1891, the uh, the train the train had been built uh, through our nation, and uh, <coughs> this is uh, the superintendent of railroads, Cornelius Van Horn, named Siding 15 in the honor of his favorite artist. His name was Mindert Habima, and Mindert Habima lived um, between 18 and no, between 1638 and 1709. He was a landscape artist. <clears throat> and when he came through here, <clears throat> it reminded him of a painting that uh, Hab Habima did in the 16th century. And he named uh, the siding in his honor. That's how we got the name Hobima, which is Habima. Then in 2014, the um, it was the will of the four nations here in Muscogee to change the name back to its original name. And they were successful in doing that. And then December 31st of 2013, the uh, four nations celebrated the official name change with a, uh, a round dance uh, at the Louisville Reserve. And the, uh, the, four the four nations signed a declaration confirming the name change to take place effective the next day, January 1st, 2014. This is the, um, the Northwest uh, Mounted Police. This is their map. As you can see, uh, this is prior to uh, the provinces being in existence. We have uh, the Assiniboia region, we have the Alberta region, we have Saskatchewan region, and Manitoba region is divided. Not like it looks today. But what we have here are treaty territories and we have um, reserves. The reserves where, um, where they are now. Then we have <coughs> different um, uh, bands that uh, where they were spotted and where they were residing at the time. If you look down towards uh, Sharphead Reserve, 
Over by uh, Morningside, we have Muddy Bull, part of the, <clears throat> it was part of this area as well. Then you have Bobtail, then you have Ermanskin, then you have uh, Samson. This map was done in 18, 1888 from the uh, Dominion of Canada. And they have uh, the RCMP outposts. So this gives you a, a, a brief tour of uh, what we have here in the museum.